How's everybody doing? We got chapter 10 today. Contrast of the righteous and the wicked. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is a grief to his mother. All parents can absolutely relate to this. A rebellious child makes a parent's soul hurt. Verse 2. Ill-gotten gains do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord will not allow the righteous to hunger, but he will reject the craving of the wicked. For a while, the wicked may seem to realize their desires, but in the end, God removes their accomplishments because they are evil. Verse 4. Poor is he who works with a negligent hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. We're going to see a lot of being lazy spoken of in this book. Verse 5. He who gathers in summer is a son who acts wisely, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who acts shamefully. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise of heart will receive commands, but a babbling fool will be ruined, which we spoke of yesterday. He who walks in integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will be found out. He who winks the eye causes trouble, and a babbling fool will be ruined. Kids, this doesn't mean you can't wink. <laughs> the idea of winking in context here is talking about a person who does not take wickedness and foolishness seriously. It's referring to a troublemaker or a rabble rouser, which is one of my favorite words. <laughs> Verse 11, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all transgressions. On the lips of the discerning, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him who lacks understanding. You lack wisdom, the correction will be a painful lesson. This is the first teaching of physical or corporal punishment as a disciplinary measure, teaching us that God is not opposed to that type of discipline. It's presented in scripture more than once, and this is God's word, not man's. But it does not imply being out of control, and we're going to see this more as we keep reading. Verse 14, wise men store up knowledge, but with the mouth of the foolish, ruin is at hand. We see that on a daily basis. Verse 15, the rich man's wealth is his fortress. The ruin of the poor is their poverty. Other scriptures teach that both the rich and the poor should trust in the Lord as their only source of provision and protection. Verse 16, the wages of the righteous is life, the income of the wicked, punishment. He is on the path of life who heeds instruction, but he who ignores reproof goes astray. He who conceals hatred has lying lips, and he who spreads slander is a fool. When there are many words, transgression is unavoidable, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Loose lips sink ships, and too much talk can lead to gossip and slander. Verse 20. The tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of understanding. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Doing wickedness is like sport to a fool, and so is wisdom to a man of understanding. So pick your path and stay on that road. What the wicked fears will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. So this emphasizes the unstable or dangerous place that the wicked stand in. Trouble, or the whirlwind, comes to all people but the wicked have no foundation to stand on when it does come. As tornadoes destroy everything in their path, so shall the wrath of God sweep away the wicked. Verse 26, Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy one to those who send him. Verse 26 here is all about extreme irritation and disappointment. One who sends a lazy man to do the work will be irritated by their laziness and lack of concern for hard work like smoke in the eyes. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. The hope of the righteous is gladness, 
but the expectation of the wicked perishes. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the upright, but ruin to the workers of iniquity. The righteous will never be shaken, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. The mouth of the righteous flows with wisdom, but the perverted tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous bring forth what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is perverted. God's righteous men and women have a sense of discernment in what they say. All right. Well, if you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ that has led to obedience and repentance in your life, please stick around and pray. Dear Lord, again, thank you for such great wisdom and instruction. This book has been an absolute blessing so far and just keeps increasing our knowledge and understanding of your ways. We're incredibly grateful for this and for your guidance. We continue seeking your wisdom, Lord, and ask that you deliver us from wickedness and evil. May we not model or desire any of its ways. In all that we do, may we remain honest, especially in the workplace. May we go to work daily with the intent of honoring you above our work or employer and to bring diligent hands to whatever it is that we do. Again, all for the sake of bringing you glory. May we be open and humble to receive godly commands and instruction from your word, our pastors, and godly mentors around us who know your truth and your ways. Jesus, please make our mouths fountains of life, having edifying lips with controlled tongues and words. Please keep us from perverse speech and crooked talk, including what we post online. Each day, Lord, we encounter much that angers us because how the world behaves and treats you. But let us not forget that we were in that same condition when you found us. So may we release any bitterness and frustration to you and not store any hatred within our hearts, including retribution. May we trust in you and put all those frustrating thoughts into your hands to deal with. And finally, Lord, may we maintain a healthy fear and reverence of you and never be lazy in anything that we do. This book we're in teaches us numerous times about your disgust of the lazy, and may we never behave in such a manner. Rather, may we be grateful for all the opportunities you give to us and be good stewards to maintain what we have. Thanks to you through whom all blessings flow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I appreciate you guys. You know that. <laughs> I love being here. Love God's word. I'm getting a lot out of this. I really hope you are too. Thank you for uh, joining in today and hope to see you tomorrow. God bless your day. Take care.